What's up, class? Welcome to our fourth mini lecture in our Deviance class. Today, we're going to be talking about homelessness and poverty in relation to Deviance. So, the purpose of this lecture is to help you guys understand the concept of double Deviance and to also try and get you guys to think more deeply about other people's experiences and situations. And I'm trying to talk fast so I can actually have one that's within the five to seven minute time limit that my boss would like me to have. Okay, so to start off, double deviance. Double deviance is a term used to explain how something can both be viewed as deviant and it can also cause deviance. So our topic for this week is just that. Being homeless and or poor breaks our social norm of achieving the American dream. And what happens if we break a social norm? We're committing an act of deviance. Similarly, being homeless and or poor can also be a cause of deviance. Someone who is homeless and has no money may be forced to steal food, which is an act of deviance, simply to try and survive. So to summarize the idea of double deviance, um, it's an idea that means whatever is being discussed, in our case it's homelessness and poverty, is viewed as an act of deviance in and of itself by society, and it can also be a cause for someone to commit an act of deviance. All right, so when discussing homelessness and poverty, discussing stereotypes as well is very important. And I want you all to close your eyes and think of a homeless person, just your idea of a homeless person. Now, raise your hand if your homeless person is a man. Okay, open your eyes and notice how all of you kept your hands up. Now, keep your hand up if a homeless person is older, like an older gentleman, or if he is a veteran. Okay, only six, seven, only eight of you put your hands down. Okay, so this, you can put your hands down now. So, this is because we as a society have a stereotype of what a homeless person is supposed to look like. And for most people, that's an older gentleman who is possibly also a veteran. And this is far from the truth. Um, and I, I want to warn you guys that the next two slides are... Two to three slides are pretty sad, so I just want you to be prepared. I know, it's very sad. Okay, so childhood homelessness is something that is all too real for our society. Based on the articles that we read this week, who read them? No one? Okay. <laughs> um, so based on the articles that I read this week, there are over 1.2 million homeless children, and the definition of a homeless child is someone who's homeless that is under the age of 18. Um, on any given night, there are over 1.2 million homeless children. These children do not know where they're going to sleep that night. They don't know how they're going to get food for the next day. They might not be able to attend school at all because they aren't able to get there, um, they're scared, they're worried every single day, and how can you expect a child to develop and succeed when they're unable to get their basic needs met? No child should have to wonder where their next meal is coming from or where they're going to be able to sleep. And it's just a heartbreaking truth within our society that childhood homelessness is something that happens and has happened and is happening and will happen in the future. So... Some important topics to discuss from our assigned articles that I read this week. Um, I think one important thing to note is from homelessness.org, from endhomelessness.org, my apologies, that says, quote, within the white group, 11 out of every 10,000 people experience homelessness. For black people, that number is more than four times as large, 48 out of every 10,000 people. Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders particularly stand out as having the highest rates, with 121 out of every 10,000 people experiencing homelessness, end quote. Black people have been oppressed for years and have had their rights stripped away from them. Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders have been victims of colonization and they've had their homeland stripped away from them. Um, it's a really messed up 
situation, and that's why I want to talk about it, is it's a really messed up situation that the people who have been oppressed so far more often within society and within our history are the ones who are now suffering the most from homelessness. Ridiculous. Um, Another important statistic is from foryouth.org, quote, when the violence from their childhood is combined with their experiences as adults, 92% of homeless mothers have been severely physically or sexually assaulted. 88% have been violently abused by a family member or an intimate partner, end quote. So this is saying that either throughout their childhood and or their adulthood, they were abused or assaulted in some way. Um, And homeless mothers, just being a homeless mother gives them a higher chance of being assaulted. And being a homeless mother tells us that they have a higher chance of having been assaulted in their past. Another very messed up thing that people who have gone through traumatic experiences in the past are now still suffering today. Another statistic from NPR.org, quote, In 2019 to 2020, schools identified 1.28 million homeless students. Meanwhile, HDU, which is the Department of Housing and Urban Development, identified 106,364 children under the age of 18 that were homeless. And the HDU count is considered the official count of homelessness. And this is important because it's insane. Just for children under the age of 18, there were over 1.2 million homeless children identified by schools, by teachers, by administrators at schools. Yet, the Department of Housing and Urban Development only counted for maybe 10% of that. They counted just over 100,000. Um, so what does that mean? Does that mean that the federal government is only going to dish out enough money to help 100,000 homeless children, even though there are more than 1.2 million of them currently? Another thing that I found in our articles that I thought was really messed up and needs to be discussed more is the fact that you cannot receive housing assistance unless you live in a homeless shelter. Like, if you're paying for a motel every single night, night after night, um, or you're couch surfing on each friend's couch, family member's couches, you don't have a stable place to live, that doesn't mean anything. You will not receive any help in receiving homeless housing. Um, if If you put yourself into a homeless shelter with people who could be so much older than you that could have lots of mental health issues um, that might, you know, try and hurt you I don't know but just strangers when you put yourself in a home with these strangers then they're like okay we'll help you find some housing now very messed up Um, another thing is that homeless students are less likely to graduate high school and this is just it puts them in a constant cycle because they're not able to finish their education due to homelessness they're at a greater risk to be a homeless adult but they can't finish their education if they're a homeless child because how are they getting to school? How are they being fed every day? Where are they sleeping every night? What is the quality of their sleep that night? They're not going to be able to succeed in school if these basic needs are not being met. And so they're not going to be able to graduate high school and therefore they have a greater risk of being a homeless adult because they're not being able to further their education or get a job or anything like that. And it's just awful. So, after discussing these topics from our assigned articles, what are some things that we could do to help? We could make affordable or free housing from state and or government funding, more resources for the homeless, transportation to and from school and free education or vocational training, set up more food kitchens to feed the homeless so they're not worried about when their next meal is coming from, and more training for school workers to be able to identify homelessness in children. All right, guys, so that ends our lecture on homelessness and poverty. I hope you guys leave here today with a good grasp of double deviance and a little more understanding of our society and its members.